and welcome to an all new review. I'm Zaran and that is my colleague Anas. Before we start, do you want to tell everyone why we're reviewing a 2018 car in 2019? Basically because it's not every day we get the chance to review one of the best selling roadsters ever built, which is the Mazda MX-5, also known of course as the Miata. Yes, but this is not a Miata. Aha, because this is a Fiat. It's a Japanese roadster with an Italian spirit. I know you're all confused by now, so yalla, let's start this review and clear things up. So basically, Fiat and Mazda formed a partnership in which Fiat took the Mazda MX-5 and built the 124 to pay homage to its 1966 classic. But wait, this isn't just a Fiat 124. This is the Abarth 124 Spider. And to make things even better, we have for you today what they call the Heritage Edition. For those of you who may not know what Abarth is, it is essentially what AMG is to Mercedes. You can say it's Fiat's fun division. When it comes to the design, Fiat went back to the original and gave the new model a retro feel. And here I gotta confess to you, when I first saw pictures of the car online, I wasn't a big fan of this design. But now because I have the car with me and I saw it in the flesh, it grows on you. Because it looks so different to anything else on the road and now I'm in love with the design. Speaking of going back to the original, the Abarth 124 has rounded headlights like the original, a long wide hood like the original and rectangular tail lamps like the original. And because we have the heritage edition with us today, we get this beautiful color scheme of white, black and red. Zaran, here's a question. Do you know why the black on the hood is matte and not glossy? Because it looks cooler? No, because this is the original color scheme Abarth used on their rally cars. And to avoid distracting rally drivers of any sun glare, they painted the hood with matte black so it doesn't reflect any rays from the sun. But on this one, it just makes the car look cooler. That's what I said. Anyway, what's also black and red are the 17-inch wheels and the Brembo brakes hidden behind them. On the inside, it looks exactly like the Mazda. I know, I know what you're gonna say. But that means, Zaran, Japanese reliability. Yes, but what I wanted to say is that it looks simple and functional and everything is exactly where you'd expect it to be. Yeah, and that too. And to continue with the heritage black and red theme we spoke about earlier, you get black and red leather seats, which are sports seats to keep you in place. And at the same time, you get leather, which is black on the steering wheel and on the dashboard with red stitching. Although the cabin is small, it is packed with features. I mean, can you imagine nine Bose speakers fitted in such a small space? Neither can I. And that's why they fitted two speakers in each headrest. And you can show that off to your friends and tell them you have speakers in your headrest, just like their gaming couches. But they actually did that for a specific reason. You see, when the roof is down, they wanted you to hear your music and phone clearly. Speaking of phone, the Abarth gets a 7-inch infotainment screen with Bluetooth, built-in navigation, two USB charging ports and an auxiliary audio input. All of that is great, but can we please talk about my favorite feature now? Let me guess, the heated seats? <laughs> no, it's the manual rooftop. Listen, do me a favor, can you Google the fastest power folding roof we can get now in the market? Power folding roof. What is it? Okay. It's the Ford Mustang. Ah. Seven seconds to open and nine seconds to close. Wow, great numbers. And do you know what that means? We got a challenge. Three, two, one, go. Done. Three, two, one, go. Done. Let 
let's start with what makes the Abarth different from its Fiat and Mazda siblings. The Abarth shares the Fiat's 1.4 litre turbo engine but pumps figures up to 170 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. That's 30 horsepower more than the Fiat. What's more interesting, although the Abarth 124 has a smaller engine when compared to the Mazda's 2-liter naturally aspirated, it still manages to produce 10 more horsepower and 50 more newton meters of torque. Yeah. <laughs> Put it into sport mode and the Abarth pushes all that power through a 6-speed automatic transmission to hit 100 kilometers per hour in just 6.8 seconds. But all of those numbers is not what the Abarth 124 Spider is all about. Let me not tell you what it's all about. Let me try to show you what it's all about. <laughs> The Abarth is all about the fun you get and the feeling you get from driving this rear-wheel drive Roadster. It's something so many cars cannot offer you. To put it into words, the driving position and the accuracy and feedback you get from the steering wheel only reminds me of driving a go-kart. That's so true, and with the limited slip differential, the Abarth lets you kick its tail out and have some fun too. Yes. And this being the Heritage Edition, all of that is accompanied by an amazing record Monza exhaust system that makes the loudest and angriest sound a 1.4 liter can ever make. And to make sure you enjoy those beautiful symphonies to the fullest, the Abarth is fitted with Brembo brakes and a Bilstein sport suspension setup. Although the Abarth 124 Spider will put a huge smile on your face every time you drive it, it's not the most practical car you can buy. With the roof up, visibility isn't great. And let's not joke about it. There's barely any space to keep your belongings inside the cabin. Yes, and I can add to that, that amazing sports suspension it has is so stiff that it's going to make you feel every bump, groove and imperfection on the road. But you know what, Zaran? None of that matters because the moment you turn off that engine and start walking away from the car, you just can't wait to come back and start driving it again. So it's addictive. Yes, it is. And that's why it's worth 140,000 dirhams. Definitely is. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>